So today we're looking at offensive tackle prospect out of Oklahoma State, Tevin Jenkins. I think he might settle into guard at some point into his career. A lot of his tape screams guard. This is from a year ago. This is he's 6'6", 310. He plays like he's like 335. I've seen him listed 320, 325 other places. He's a big, strong, powerful road grader. Really fun to watch. Gets a lot of guys on the ground. So we'll go into why I think he might be a little bit better guard than tackle. At some point in the NFL, doesn't mean he can't play tackle. All right, so things to consider, guard or tackle. Big thing is how you use your hands, how you rework them, how you use them during your set, how you vary your hand usage, how you do with hand fighting, establishing control, a lot of that stuff, processing speed. Things happen on the interior faster. A lot of the run game is schemed up from the interior. So how you process, if you're a smart, crafty player, that can make for a really good guard. Recovery traits, physicality, personality or mentality. Got to be a little bit nastier, a little bit meaner when you're dealing with some big fellas. Which dimensions of balance that you grade well in tied into your overall athleticism. Basically, do you do better in a phone booth or do you do better out on an island? And then also your internal clock. Natural sense of when plays develop, how they develop, what you're supposed to do, finding help, working with others, combo blocks, all that good stuff. This is pretty much a play you'd see in high school. A uh, great example of him being a very powerful, very nasty player. Four eye, three man front. Not really a hard pass blocking rep. Freaking torques him. And it cuts off that outside ankle, but he's basically using his whole outside half to just totally torque and finish. He's crawling over him. Yeah, that's something you'd 100% see in high school. Here's an example of how he uses his inside arm as a recovery trait. When we're talking recovery traits, that can be a bunch of things. For Jenkins, his power and his strength is his overall best recovery trait. And his hand. Pause it here. Doesn't look great. Watch how he controls that. Body totally out of whack. This is a strong player. Very strong. One of the strongest in the class. And so he's able to maintain control even when his feet are out of whack bring him back inside all right so good players pick up on tendencies i think this is an example of jenkins doing that previous play nickel corner was uncovered came on a defensive back blitz there was a tight end attached he was able to pick him up it was a run play so this play a lot of a lot of offensive line play is like it's like and when we talk about blocking schemes it's a lot of talk around blocking schemes for the actual lineman is like all right if they do this we're gonna do this but if they do this we're gonna do this if that makes sense it's a lot of like sorting out possibilities and probabilities a free safety prop from this alignment is probably not coming on just like a free blitz from like 20 yards away it's not gonna it's not gonna hit but when you're looking at like the boundary side of the formation this corner is really close he already did it once so jenkins already tipped off to it and so he's going to communicate that in the blocking schemes block inside out you're going to see it on the next angle so free snap look at him just point So blocks inside out, they're able to account for everyone. And so this is just like a small part of like insight into your mental processing. You can look at, you can study tendencies, look at all that stuff after the game, but it, pretty good players will realize that in game or at least just account for them. So you don't know if someone's coming, but if they do, we're going to be prepared for it. So Jenkins, good job communicating there. With short setters who are physically very capable, very strong, it can be very tempting to be over aggressive initially. So you get the wide alignment. Pretty wide split here. So you're going to let him come to the inside. Get hip to hip. I think he works well with his help. One of the ways to split a double team is literally to split the double team. There's two ways. There's actually more ways. But if you're in like a zero tech, there's a different technique that you'll use as a defensive lineman. A lot of times you can try to split the double team literally with quickness. If you think of it as vectors, you have one here, you have one here. You want those angles to widen. So that all the force isn't going down on you. So that's why as a defense alignment, you want to really split that get up field as one of your options. Getting hip to hip. And then showing the displacing. Good displacement power. We talk about internal clock a lot with quarterbacks. It's just kind of like natural rhythm, timing of the play, when you're supposed to do things. I think it's harder to see on certain plays of offense alignment. I think this is a good example where you can kind of see it's just like your natural sense of timing. 
So he's going to have to deal with two things. One, the slant to the inside. He can't leave too early. The backer's spilling. And so he's going to have to make the eventual climb, but he's going to have to help out at the first level. Some guys will either help out too long at the first level and miss the block, or they won't help enough at the first level and it will just like mess up the timing of the play. It'll make it harder on the guard. So I think he has a good like sense of timing. It's like one, two. Like he kind of splits his responsibilities in two. Like he, he doesn't really put too much attention to either one of them. He's able to get to both. Good job in the run game. Here's a rep I really like from the Texas game. A lot of good hand fighting examples in this game. I'm going to tell you why I like this rep. Because his counter punch, he will change up the angle from which he counter punches you. So some guys have like a tendency with their punch where they'll, they'll either punch you high or they'll, they'll come from the waist up. He does a really nice job because he's patient, retracts that outside hand. Doesn't look like he's going to punch there. But he's going to get the jab in, even from kind of an unorthodox situation. So some players, they'll do this retraction of the hands, but they can be predictable from where they're going to punch you again. So they might come up. So I like how he can adjust that. Just get the little jab in, helps him during the rush. Here's another example I like of Jenkins, how he's a very active player with his hands during his set. And so in relation to hand fighting, you're looking a lot of, you're looking at timing, you're looking at kind of how they react to the moves of the defensive player, what the rest of their body's doing. 98 gets into his chest. Looks like he's going to try the long arm. Jenkins isn't going to be able to reach him. Quickly realizes this. Aiming point is the elbow. That's going to get that down. Because he short sets all the time. He's absolutely a short setter with some patience. So like a lot of short setters, they're kind of like built like Jenkins. They're really physically capable. They're maulers and they can be over aggressive. They can be too out in front with their punch, too aggressive with their punch. So I like what we're going to see here. And so like these types of players, a lot of times they'll be two hand punchers and they won't have this level of patience to where they kind of have their hands operating independently. It's like, all right, what's my outside arm doing? What's my inside arm doing? Sees the swipe, retracts the hand. He's really patient in this set. So it's kind of balancing two polar opposites. You don't see it in every player. Um, really like that rep from Jenkins. Blocks so many four eyes. So much in his tape. Basically just Big 12 defense. Like that's what you're going up against. I don't really want to see him against wide alignment rushers. Not going to get wider than this. So I think he's making a real priority, like, all right, let's get let's get a little bit of depth here. Let's get a little bit of depth on that kick step. Pew. It's the inside move. Reaction to the inside move. This is where an anchor, this is where being a powerful athlete, like linemen are like power really does matter. Now the different dimensions, we can go and debate that, but Power can say, like, he doesn't have, he's not Jedrick Willis. With, like, the level of foot speed. It's not like he's, like, da, 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 like getting back right in position. But that inside arm and just the level of power that he has helps save him, helps control the block. Really good job here. Here's another example of him in a short set against a much smaller rusher. Watch how, watch what he does with his hands here. Because I think it captures his overall mindset. Smaller rusher. All right. Short set. Meeting him early. There's a wind up to his hands. He doesn't just want to put you. He doesn't just want to block you. He wants to put you through the ground. Always looking to finish. Even in pass pro. Like when you, when you see this from alignment in pass pro, it gives you good insight into their mentality. They can take two approaches. One, let me just block you. Or two, let me really finish you. So Jenkins is a player who I think is actually pretty crafty with his hands. He changes how he uses them. Uh, sometimes he's literally just baiting you. He'll put an arm out or retract it. Sometimes he'll actually be more active, try to disengage your hands. Sometimes he's going for a simple jab. Sometimes he's going for more of a control at the beginning of the rep. So this rep against Osai, shorting him. This is going to play a little bit more head up than the initial alignment. Osai is going to have to get a little lateral. Watch how he uses the inside arm. So just one of these, one example. A little swipe. And the outside arm, and he's going to come over. 
So there's good pacing and good recognition to this rep. So outside, really wide alignment, gain some more depth on this one, but there's some pacing. So he sees the inside move. Guard's going to be able to overtake that. His eyes are coming right back outside. Good job here. Good, good tendency recognition because Texas doesn't stud a ton, but they started doing this a little bit earlier in the game. Give him a tiny bit of problems. Jenkins is usually really good in the run game, but I think this is an example of how he, he has certain dimensions of balance. I think he grades differently in. I think his reactionary balance. So like if anything weird happens on the field, unexpected, you have to make moves that aren't really coordinated. I don't think he's quite as good as this. So this is going to be right here. Helping out at the first level. Ends up on the ground on the second. Slow us down a couple factors. This is very tight in here. This is very congested. Not sure if he gets tripped up. He's going to take on this block. Momentum's drifting a little bit this way. He's going to take on this block with his outside half. And so I think a bet I think a player with a little bit better reactionary balance would be able to kind of bring that around, change the blocking angle a little bit, create the seal. He's normally good when his second level climb, like his target at the second level, like after he's helping out at the first level, when they're directly in front of him, I think he's not quite as good when angles are involved. But yeah, this is just more like about the overall athlete that he is and why I think that he has a little bit more guard traits than than overall tackle traits. So when we talked about Slater having a very flexible anchor, I don't know if I fully explained it. It's not really connected to like your upper body flexion. When I said like you have to anchor from like multiple points, but then the other part of it is, is that you have to be able to reset that anchor. And so this play is really all about momentum. But traits wise, what stands out to me is the reactionary foot quickness. I think better athletes at the tackle position, you're going to get the long arm, which is basically flipping your momentum against yourself. There are players who are going to be able to reset their base, which is going to give them a chance on the inside. He's going to end up on his back because his feet can't stay with the rest of his body. They can't counteract the momentum. And so like he looks great on a lot of passing reps because of how he can play the pass set. And because of his other tools. But when we're actually talking about like the physical reactive quickness of his feet, his feet do lag a little bit behind the rest of his body. And this is a move that can kind of catch you a little bit off guard if you're not ready for it. But better athletes, I think, can save themselves a little bit. You might stumble. You might still give up that inside lane, but you'll, you'll give yourself a chance. And you won't get in this position. Don't see it happen a ton but I think there's a potential for it for certain rushers. A couple more things about Jenkins in the run game. He is going up to the second level. A lot of times he's helping out at the first level, going up to the second level. He will be like a staircase climber. And so I, what I mean by that is like he'll segment, like when he's closing the distance up to the se second level, he'll have like these segments where he's like, all right, vertical climb, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. When he's trying to actually close the distance to a target or maintain leverage. Not the best athlete um, that you'll see. He's a really big guy. But I think he does a nice job on this rep. He's not going to do that same staircase climb because he has play side leverage. But as you can see, he can get a little beat to the outside, which is fine on this play. He's just going to flip that. I think at the second level, he's not going to be the best climber in all situations. It depends. Like If he has play side leverage, he's usually good. If his target is right in front of him, he's usually good. Some of the more improvisational movements, he he, I think he understands his like overall strengths and weaknesses. So he's going to be a little bit more cautious about like actually climbing. If you look at Slater, if you look at Sewell, a lot of times they just make a beeline for their target and they get there, they, they decelerate really quickly and they'll just hinge, they'll seal. Jenkins isn't quite the same way, but certain areas in the run game, also when we're talking like outside, like lateral movement, he does a good job at... Um, maintaining like the integrity of the block as long as he doesn't have to go too far laterally so in terms of the run game good player um but you really want he's like a downhill player which isn't a term you use a lot for linemen but everything that you can get downhill for jenkins you're not going to see him get pushed back very often he's going to get movement up front probably what he's best at so with rashawn slater we talked about like the functional athlete 
where defenders are, where his blocking assignment is, and where they're going to end up doesn't really matter for him because he can make a variety of movements. The balance is absolutely exceptional. Where defenders are going to be, where they end up, I think matters more with Jenkins. He's just not as good of a functional athlete. So he's going to help out initially at the first level, keeping protected the inside. And you can see he eventually gets there, but I want to just use like, an, as an analogy, like functional athletes are magnetized almost. Like it, it looks like a magnetic effect to where their blocker is. Like wherever they go, it's like a heat seeking missile. They'll get there. With Jenkins building up a little bit of acceleration, overshoots it just a little bit. He's still able to get there, but there are situations like this, some like improvisational plays I want to call it, where he's reacting to where a backer will go, and he can get there, but it's not always the most efficient movement, it's not always the most functional movement, and this is where I think you see some of the limitations of Jenkins, because down blocking, displacement, combo blocking, great, phenomenal. Some of this stuff, not quite as good on. Smart player. If you look at him, we'll play this once all the way through. So he's going to help out at the first level. Like we're talking about breaking whatever the play is into like its component parts, like start, middle, and end. The start, inside. even on him, then engages and finishes. In terms of down blocks, always creating movement. If you want to run the ball near the goal line, you'll be really hard pressed to find plays where he's going backwards this close to the goal line. So we're going to get a down block on the three tech. He just gets movement all the time. Really like it from him. Again, the more you let him play in a condensed area, I think the better off you're going to be in the run game. Past game, he is a really good short setter, which is why I'm not saying he's a guard only. It depends what you're going to ask him to do, but in terms of the run game near the goal line, this is a strong, strong player. I can't emphasize that enough. Another wide line rush, obvious passing situation. I think when you talk about the term mirroring with your feet, reaction to what they do, his feet can lag a little bit behind during the actual pass set. I don't think he is as functional of an athlete as a player like Slater. And obviously that's fine. Slater is an absolutely sweet player. But I think when you watch a player like Jedrick Wills or Rayshon Slater, when we talk about a very functional athlete, they're going to be able to get back in position quick, I think a little bit quicker than Jenkins is here. As you can see, the feet lag just a little bit behind the upper body. You're not going to see it in a lot of his tape because most of the time he's playing rushers who are head up or a little bit inside of him. He plays those guys a certain way. I think sometimes he's he plays you a little bit too much um, inside out. So against this rep, against 98, hand fighting initially. This is late into the rep anyways. Just a trait that I noticed. So his inside arm. Hand fighting doesn't really overtake to the outside. He's shorting him anyways. And so if you lose control with the outside arm there, I think he can, based on what he does with some of his hand usage, I think he can get a little bit of forward tilt, a little bit over his skis. And I don't think he has ideal recovery quickness, which is why I think he could. Be better at guard than tackle. I'm not saying he can't play tackle, but I don't think he has the best recovery traits. Again, late into the down, not crazy concerned about that, but he just doesn't face rushers in that alignment a lot of times. And so I think he either has to adjust a little bit of his play style. Um, but again, you want him doing what he's really good at. So I think the tighter, the less base that he has to block usually the best here's something i like in the run game texas going a little bit more four man in the start of the second half he's climbing to the second level and so he doesn't look like great position but he changes that angle 
And he's working his feet back. Linebacker could slip off this if you're too lungy and you're not able to work your feet back. You can lunge a little bit, but when you're in this position, I want to see what you do. So good job working the feet back. Another example talking about reactive foot quickness. You can see flaws in a play that is the result is a good play because 11 ends up on the ground here. 11 is a pretty good player, by the way. And so you see the feet outside, back to the inside work. The feet are lagging a little bit behind him to this move. But you see the natural power. So he's able to save himself here. You just wonder what it looks like against more powerful athletes. We're able to withstand what it effectually is Jenkins' counterpunch, which is just bulldozing power. One thing I'm looking at is what happens if you can get his outside arm down? Because with Osai here, there's hand fighting initially. Jenkins playing him inside out. He goes for the chop, doesn't fully get it down. So this is like the debate that you're having. How many players is he going to play where they can actually get his inside arm down? Or his outside arm down? Because Osai doesn't here. But in case he does, I think you're going to be able to cut that angle a lot tighter. Jenkins is able to push Osai past the pocket on this one. But I think when you see players in this type of position get a little lungy when they're hand fighting. You really want to study the outside half because that outside arm is strong. But if you can get it down, I think you might have some outside lanes here. And I want to see what players can actually do that. So Jenkins did a really nice job this game. Last play of the game, Osai, super wide alignment. Jenkins is going to play him a little bit too much inside out. He's barely getting that inside half. You want to see him gain a little bit more depth from this alignment. And so with a freaky player like Osai, is this technically a loss? No. But he cut it down a little better. So that's what we're talking about. Like, fully playing a guy inside out. You don't want to be too far on that end. And this is a tough alignment. But you just want to see him get a little bit more depth. Because these plays can matter in the, in the outcome of the games. I think he's best when rushers try to play him down to center. Super strong anchor. He's also really good as like in help so eight's dropping you see so many of these knockdown blocks on his tape um, both 19 and 20 just a powerful strong forceful player i think he's gonna be really good in pass protection help um, if you move him to guard and you have slide protections one way he's not you know he's getting a two on one he's gonna get guys on the ground he's, he's just a strong strong freaking player Again, the more that you let Jenkins play within a phone booth, the more you're going to see what he's great at. Um, he's got good timing to these types of plays where he's getting the help. Then he's finding work. Big, strong, powerful man. Hard to go through, even at the NFL level. I think he's going to be a force in these types of situations. Goal line situations, he, he's done great going back to 2019. He's going to get pushed for you. If your run game doesn't have any push to it, just add this guy to your team. He's going to be a, he's going to be a good addition in that regard. He, he's crafty with his hands. He does a lot of good stuff. Don't think he's quite the functional athlete as a lot of players. I've seen him mocked in, in the first round. I think that's a little rich for me. I have him rated as a better guard than a tackle, even though I haven't seen him play guard. Um, because he just has a lot of guard traits. As he, um, his skill set, I think, will translate well to guard, even though I haven't seen him play it. But yeah, good player. I think he's a top 65 player in the class. Um, should go in the first two rounds. I don't know if I would take him in round one. You could take a swing on him at the end of round one if you if you need this type of player. Um, but if you can get him on day two, I think he's going to be a really good player for you. Attitude, toughness, all that stuff. Hand usage. Pretty smart player as well. So yeah, I like Jenkins. I think he's definitely one of the stronger players in the class. And I don't think you can go that wrong picking him. I think it's just more of a debate of where you're going to actually play him that you're going to have to sort yourself out. A little, little bit of Cody Ford vibes to him. 
just as an overall skill set. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We're going to be pushing out content, going for a couple videos a week, basically now until the draft. So we're going to be pushing out content, get some good stuff for you guys. So thank you for watching. Have a good day and subscribe.